got to get that nose up. Get that nose up! Ah. Pull back on the controls. Right? But hold it. The wheel is all the way back. Now what? What would you do? In this situation, pulling back to raise the nose turned out to be a myth. The fact is, in this case, the classic spin, pushing forward is one step in recovery. Just what is a spin? A spin is a maneuver during which the aircraft descends rapidly in a helical movement about a vertical axis, the spin axis. Sometimes a spiral dive might resemble a spin, but there is a fundamental difference. Throughout a spiral dive, you have the aircraft under full aerodynamic control. You can fly out of it. In a spin, on the other hand, the aerodynamic and inertial forces are in balance, which you have to upset in order to regain control. If you have sufficient altitude at the start of the spin, fine. But if not, you may become a statistic. A spin is caused by two primary factors. The aircraft at or beyond the stall angle of attack, plus roll or yaw or side slip acting on the aircraft. A spin is divided into phases, incipient and fully developed. The incipient phase is that portion after stall when the aircraft commences a spin-like motion. The aerodynamic and the inertial forces have not yet achieved a balance. In the fully developed phase, the aerodynamic and the inertial forces are in balance, and the attitude, angles, and motions tend to be essentially repetitive from turn to turn. The view is generally a steep, nose-down attitude with a yawing, rolling motion about the spin axis. The airspeed is usually near stall. An angle of attack indicator would show a fully stalled condition. A light or horn will be activated by the stall warning system. The turn needle is fully deflected in the direction of the spin, and the rate of descent is significant. The gravity force acting on a spinning aircraft is essentially 1G. The spin is a recoverable maneuver in aircraft approved for spinning, but the recovery does require altitude. Weight, lift, thrust, and drag are terms that are familiar to you. You also know the rotation about the three axes of flight, roll, pitch, and yaw. To understand the spin, there are some other terms that you should be familiar with. Relative wind is the direction of airflow with respect to the wing as it moves through the air. Angle of attack, the angle formed by the relative wind and the cord line of the wing. Coefficient of lift, a numerical representation of the lift generated by a particular wing at a given angle of attack. Coefficient of drag, a number representing drag and derived from the same factor, angle of attack. Let's look at lift. As angle of attack increases, lift also increases. When angle of attack reaches a certain point, the airflow begins to separate from the wing. As angle of attack continues to increase, lift is still generated, but the airflow cannot follow the curvature of the wing. The stall occurs at the point of maximum lift. Drag also increases as angle of attack increases. Beyond the stall point, however, drag increases rapidly. When you are beyond stall angle of attack, if the aircraft experiences any roll, the upgoing or outboard wing 
would experience a decrease in angle of attack. Conversely, the downgoing or inboard wing has an increased angle of attack. The difference in angles of attack results in difference of lift and drag for the two surfaces. The upgoing wing is less stalled and the downgoing wing more stalled. This differential condition causes a rolling and yawing tendency at angles of attack beyond stall. The tendency is called autorotation, is self-feeding, and leads to a spin. For spin recoveries, the pilot operating handbook for each aircraft gives correct procedures, the facts without the myths. While this film cannot give you the specific recovery procedure for every aircraft, it will show the basic steps. Power. Reduce it to idle. Ailerons. Neutralize them. They could aggravate the spin. Rudder. Apply it fully, opposite to the direction of the spin. If you're confused about the direction, check the turn indicator. It will be fully deflected in the direction of the spin. Do not use the ball. Elevators. Push the control briskly forward, far enough to break the stall. Hold these control positions until rotation stops. It may take a full turn, or even more. Finally, as rotation stops, neutralize the controls and make a smooth recovery from the ensuing dive. The best way to learn about spins and spin recovery is by practice, but you must use an aircraft that has been approved for intentional spins. Is yours? The operating limitations that apply to your aircraft clearly spell it out. If your aircraft has a placard against intentional spinning, don't. Certification for a normal category aircraft requires recovery from only a one-turn spin, which is merely the incipient spin phase and not a fully developed spin. That's why you must practice spinning only in an approved aircraft. If you do, first be sure that you have someone with you who is experienced in spinning that aircraft and that the aircraft is correctly loaded. When properly introduced to intentional spins, you'll find they can become fun. <laughs> they really aren't as bad as a roller coaster ride. To stay away from inadvertent spins, keep them from developing in the first place. How do you prevent them? No stall, no spin. We know that a stall is the result of an excessively high angle of attack and that it can occur at any attitude and any airspeed. A normal stall is evidenced in most cases by an uncommanded pitching down of the nose. In contrast to the normal 1G stall is the accelerated stall. It generally occurs in a turning condition when speed may be relatively high and you're applying heavy back pressure. This causes a load or g-force to be applied as the aircraft stalls. The airplane stalls at a higher speed, producing higher roll and yaw rates. This speeds up spin entry. The most effective prevention is stall awareness. To be specific, there are several clues that can warn you of an impending stall. Vision is one, but its usefulness is limited to watching for a change of attitude. If you see that the nose is higher than it should be for the power and speed being developed, you may be about to stall. But nose attitude, higher or lower, is not an absolutely sure sign, because stalls can occur in any attitude. Hearing is another one. 
the sounds related to flight will increase as your speed increases. But if a stall is impending, the sounds lessen. But remember, the stall warning system will come on five to ten knots before stall. Another sign is muscle sense. Your body responds to the aircraft's changes of direction and speed. It is developed with experience. Also, feeling. As speed is reduced, the controls become mushy with poor response. In some airplanes, Airframe buffet may also indicate the approach of a stall. Last but not least, your flight instruments. They warn you of an impending stall, and they indicate the actual stall. An angle of attack indicator is the most accurate stall warning instrument. However, the airspeed indicator is the most common. Your sight, hearing, and feeling are the means by which stall awareness enables you to sense an impending stall. But you can lose your awareness very quickly if your attention is lessened or lost by distraction, the major cause of inadvertent stalls. Anything, anything that takes your attention away from your number one responsibility, flying the aircraft, may lead to a stall. How do you prevent that kind of distraction? Develop a good scan pattern. You should, in fact you must, keep your attention moving back and forth between flying the aircraft, the instruments, looking for other traffic, and outside references. In any situation, if you become aware of an impending stall, how do you handle it? First and foremost, positively reduce the angle of attack. Coordinate your controls to eliminate any slipping or rolling input. And apply power as necessary, even to full, to minimize altitude loss. Studies show that the stall spin accident occurs all too frequently in general aviation operations. Do you know how your airplane reacts when near stall airspeed? To be sure, practice flying at minimum controllable airspeed, where any increase in pitch or bank will produce an immediate stall. You'll find out about your airplane's attitude, power needed versus airspeed produced, trim required, effectiveness of controls, and the effects of flap extension and retraction. Your stall avoidance ability will be definitely sharpened by practicing flight at minimum controllable airspeed. Stall spin is obviously more threatening under certain conditions, such as low altitude. The situations, however, are part of virtually every flight you make. Before you take off during pre-flight, check that the loading does not cause the center of gravity limits to be exceeded. Even with an aft CG within limits, smaller control movements and forces will change speed and attitude. Aircraft control becomes squirrely, and it's much easier to get into an inadvertent stall. Positive stall spin recovery under these conditions will be slowed down. Takeoffs also have stall spin potential. Just after liftoff and during your initial climb out, an engine failure can be disturbing, to say the least. Your instinct may be to turn back, but if you do, 
you may well set up a stall spin entry. And if it happens at initial departure altitudes, you may not be able to recover. The solution is to lower the nose immediately to attain your best glide speed, thereby preventing a stall or loss of control. Now, assess the situation. Do you have altitude to turn? In any case, it's better to proceed straight ahead through the fence with the aircraft under control than to fall out of the sky out of control. Takeoff from a short field also has stall spin potential. In order to clear obstructions, you may pull up too much too soon. Let the aircraft accelerate to the proper airspeed, then climb out. Landings have their risks too. For example, you may encounter a crosswind that makes you overshoot the turn on the final. Steepening the bank or using excessive rudder pressure and not coordinating controls to turn the aircraft back onto final can result in a situation where a slight increase in back elevator pressure could cause an unrecoverable stall. The solution, plan ahead. Don't get trapped. If you find yourself in such a situation, go around. But go arounds are not free from stall spin possibilities either. If you have set your flaps to fold down and have set trim for a nose-up condition, you're a good prospect for a departure stall. Keep the ball centered with coordinated control movement. Excessive rudder application may provide the side slip leading to stall spin entry. When you make the decision to go around, fly the aircraft. Add sufficient power. Start the climb and reduce the nose up trim as required to obtain a normal climb attitude. Remember, fly the aircraft. Use control force as necessary to control pitch attitude and heading. Raise the flaps as recommended in your pilot operating handbook. Finally, what do you do if you have a power loss on final? Again, instinctively, you may want to raise the nose to try to hold the airplane in the air. But if you do, well, you should know by now what can happen. The safe thing is to maintain best glide speed as you look for a possible touchdown spot. You shouldn't ever have to remind yourself that flying in the pattern or on short final at four to 500 feet is no place to enter a spin that requires 1,000 to 1,500 feet for recovery. You may not be able to avoid a stall spin threat, but you should be able to avoid the condition by recognizing it before it becomes a problem. To increase your confidence, we encourage you to take some spin training with a qualified instructor in an aircraft that has been approved for intentional spinning. Spins can be fun. In your own aircraft, become proficient in flight at minimum controllable airspeed and reacquaint yourself with how your aircraft reacts in stall recovery. The key to avoiding the stall spin accident is Stall awareness. Know the warning signs. Respond to them. And fly the airplane. Remember, it's a fact, not a myth. No stall, no spin.